What's the best way to mirror your iPhone on your desktop? Let's talk about it. Does the new iPhone mirroring app in Mac OS Sequoia and iOS 18 Sherlock a bunch of third-party apps? What does that even mean? If you're new to the Apple world, let's talk a little bit about that. But before we get started, be sure to like this video if you found it useful, click on subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss when I post new how-tos and reviews. Before Spotlight or the built-in search you use on your Mac today, Apple used a search feature called Sherlock on Mac OS 8 and 9. When Mac OS X came out, Sherlock was extended to use some basic web functionality. That led to developer Dan Wood creating an app called Watson. Sherlock and Watson, get it? Watson was intended to be a companion app to Sherlock with more web functionality. Watson became a very popular app right up until Apple released Mac OS X 10.2, which included pretty much everything Watson offered. After the 10.2 update, no one had a need to buy Watson anymore. And so began the term Sherlocked, or when Apple Sherlocks features from a third-party app. Now to be fair, there are two sides to every story. John Gruber has said that Apple planned the Watson features before Watson came out, and Apple offered Dan Wood a job on two different occasions. But even today, we will look at an app like iOS 18's Apple Passwords and wonder if Apple is Sherlocking 1Password or LastPass, or if the new iPhone mirroring app is Sherlocking Reflector, AirDroid, or Bezel. Okay, so now that you know the lingo on what it means when Apple Sherlocks an app, let's talk about some of the ways you can get your iPhone screen up on your Mac, and at the end, you can decide if the new iPhone mirroring app is Sherlocking one of your other favorite apps. I do a good amount of throwing my iPhone screen on my Mac for work, so I'm going to focus on a couple of ways I do this today, and then we'll talk about the new iPhone mirroring app. The first is using QuickTime. You may not know it, but you can show your iPhone screen on your Mac using QuickTime, and it's already on your computer. You do need a wired connection for this to work, so keep that in mind. The other two options I'm going to talk about today work wireless. Okay, the first app is QuickTime Player. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up QuickTime Player. It's going to bring up this dialog, and you're just going to hit cancel. And then if I go to file, new movie recording, it'll probably bring up your camera like it does right now. I'm going to go ahead and uh, plug in my phone. And then I'm going to switch. So in this dialog here, I'm going to switch over to my iPhone, which it pulled up. It'll resize and show your phone. And then from here, I can start a recording. I can capture sound. I'm controlling this from my phone. So what you're seeing on the desktop is my phone and you can resize this as well. So this is a nice, free, easy way to show your phone on your desktop using QuickTime Player. All right, let's talk about the second option, a third party app called Reflector. There are a few of them out there that are like Reflector. Bezel, A Power Mirror, AirDroid are some of them. I've tried a few and settled on Reflector. It's very feature rich. It works on Mac OS and Windows. It works wireless and you can show iOS and Android devices on your screen. It also supports screenshots and recording. On iOS, it uses AirPlay to show your screen and it's easy if you're on an Android device as you basically just cast to your Mac screen. Okay, next option is Reflector. So this is an app that is uh, just launched and it's going to put an icon up in your top bar. And so now it just lives there. So now on my iPhone, what I'm gonna do is um, start recording here and show you what that looks like. So on my iPhone, if I go into my control panel, control center, and I tap on the screen share, I'll see my MacBook Air, and if I tap on that, it's gonna prompt for a code, which is now showing on my desktop. So if I enter that code in, it's going to bring up a reflector. This is wireless, so there's no cable plugged in here. 
I actually brought it up on my other monitor, so I'm going to move it over here. You guys can see that. So it resizes and it shows here. So now I'm using my phone to control uh, what you're seeing on the screen. And you have the ability to take screenshots on the bottom. You'll see next to the phone name. You can also start a recording here. And I can go into settings and look at the different settings for this app. Uh, so this is a really nice way. This works really well. I will say I did have an app that did not work with Reflector. It was kind of an odd thing, but for the most part, this works really well. And I can um, easily share my iPhone screen on my desktop with Reflector. So that brings us to the last option to talk about today, the new iPhone mirroring app on iOS 18. This is a new feature that was announced with iOS 18 and just became available in the second beta of iOS 18. Now this is a great app. However, it's missing features that you have on other apps. There are other ways you can work around those features though. iPhone mirroring is wireless. It only works when you are not using your iPhone. So on other apps, you are using your phone and just projecting the image on your desktop. Whereas on this app, you cannot physically use your phone while using the app. There are also no built-in features like screenshots or recording in the app. But you can take a screenshot on your Mac or use an app like CleanShot X to record your screen. So the last thing to show you, which is part of the newest betas that were released, a Mac OS Sequoia and iOS 18 beta 2 on the developer beta. And this is iPhone mirroring. And there's an icon here at the bottom in my um, tray. So if I click on iPhone mirroring, it's connecting to my iPhone. And my iPhone is currently locked. So um, if I were to unlock my iPhone, which I just did, you'll see that it says iPhone in use. So I'll power off my iPhone and I'll try again and it's going to connect up. So you can actually have this, your iPhone could be charging and you could have this sitting, uh, have your iPhone charging at your desk. You could have this open and you can move around using your mouse or your trackpad on your desktop. You can get into uh, your iPhone uh, notifications will show up here on your desktop. I can use this to, to move around. And you notice if I kind of move my mouse up a little bit, it brings up a window so I can move this now. Um, you can also resize possibly. Nope, it doesn't look like I can resize um, this window. Here will this icon will um, this icon will bring up a quick switch for you. Um, this one, I'm actually not sure what this icon does, but if I were to go into settings, let's see if uh, something happens there. That'll take me back home. Ah, so that's the home button press. So if you're in something, you don't really have the ability, if I kind of tap that and try and move back, it's not working for me. So there's no real way for me to get back home, but if I tap on this icon, that'll bring me home. The other thing I think I noticed was there was really no tap and hold or right click. Oh, there we go. So if I tap an icon and hold, that'll bring up that kind of right click option. Um, let's see, nothing for doing anything like if I wanted to add a widget or anything here. I really can't do that from this interface. So this is a actually a really nice way to get your iPhone display on your desktop. Um, you do have, I think I was able to get to control center. Was I able to do control center? Um, I thought I had control center here, but I guess I wasn't able to do that. Um, yeah, so this is a nice way to get in here. If I go up to iPhone mirroring, you can go into settings, uh, not too much there that you have available for setting options. Nothing else in here. You've got an app switcher, home screen, and spotlight, so you can view that. I can quickly jump to back to my home screen or go into spotlight. Um, so those are your settings for the app. What's great about this app is that you will get your iPhone notifications on your Mac. 
While it's good for showing your iPhone screen on your desktop, the app is a little more than just that. It's a way to get your phone on your desktop to control and be able to see what's happening on your phone without picking it up. So when you're looking at different ways to get your iPhone screen up on your desktop, these are certainly solid options to consider. Of course, you'll need to wait for iOS 18 if you don't want to run a developer or public beta. Whether iPhone mirroring is Sherlocking any of the other apps? Well, I don't think it is for now. If Apple adds more features, it'll be heading that way, but for now, I think third-party apps are still better. Thanks again for watching, everyone, and we'll talk soon.